Well, the, behind me is that phrase, far more abundantly. That's just overflowing, powerful as we go through the, the book of Ephesians. Uh, today, I want to give you some, uh, we're going through chapter two, and I want to pour into you the scripture of the Lord. Uh, last week, Zach, he spoke about how it is like when we come to Christ, that we're dead to sin. Today, I want to speak to you about moving or, or going from I'm not to I am. Going from we ain't to we are. A lot of times we say we ain't or I ain't, I can't, I'm not. And God says differently. And we, we're disagreeing with the Lord. I don't ever want to disagree with the Lord because he is for us. And last week, Zach, if you remember, he, he talked about how we were dead, we were we were actually too broken. <laughs> you remember that place in your life? Man, I remember I was, I was just too broken. I ended up in jail because of my own goofiness, sin, and I ended up in jail, and I was like, God, I'm just broke. I was broke with no money. I was broke in my emotions. I was broke in my spirit, and that's when the Lord came in his mighty mercy and got me out of that jail, and I said, never again, Lord. God, I'm going to serve you. And I never looked back since that time. I was 20, and, and you need a Savior. We're, we, we are corrupt, if you remember last week, and I'm going to go into some of that. We're just corrupt without God. But it, the Bible says last week, Zach Reddy, he said, but God. But God came into the picture, and, and if you remember, he gave the example about what it's like whenever you, he, he, you know, your, your birth, phys- there's a physical birth, you know, whenever you were born, and you had nothing to do with it. I know you don't remember squirming around in your mom, you know, the belly, like, hey, get, get me out of here. Uh, all of a sudden, you had a C-section, or God birthed you from that spot, and, uh, and there you were like a baby. I actually, I heard a joke, and I, I wanted to throw it in right here. There was a, a six-year-old that came home from school, and she told her mom, she, the, you know, the mom's like, what'd you learn at school? And she said, well, a sixth grader, I mean, six-year-old, she said, we learned about making babies. And the mom was like, you know, like gulp. Um, so she waited a little while, and she went back to the kid. She's like, um... What exactly did you learn about making babies? And she said, well, we learned that like with baby, you drop the Y and you add ES, and it makes babies. <laughs> A few of y'all got that. A few of y'all didn't. Uh... But it's funny, but spiritually, the Lord saw us, and he said, I want you to be in the kingdom of God. And that's what actually Zach talked about, about, about being born again. When babies come out, they should be crying, pooping, growing, and, 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 and functioning, right? Whenever they come out. And, and then it's there, they should begin to function as a human being. And I love how he said that. He says, we're not saved by what we do, but we do when we're saved. We're not saved by what we do. I cannot crawl on my knees across the stage crying holy, holy, holy and think that, okay, that's good enough. I ought to be able to go into heaven now. And he, you know, he, it's not about that. It's about faith in Jesus Christ, period. That's what gets us to salvation. And we're going to be reading in chapter two. This, this is where Zach left off. Um, in, in, in chapter 2 and verse 10, it says this. It says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ for good works. <laughs> you ever heard someone getting saved and they, they just didn't do any good works? <laughs> they just stayed where they were at? That's not, that's not what the Lord, the Lord says, I got something planned. He says, which he has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them, going from I ain't to I am, to we can't, to we, we aren't, to we are. I got several things I want to show you here. It's right here 
It says in, in verse, let me get me a little color here. It says we are, right here, we are, we are his. We are his. That's the first thing. Go from I, I ain't to I, I'm, I'm his. We are his. And he says that we are his right there. If you could stop right there, we are. It's not like, hey, we're, we're going to be. It says we are right now. Now, <laughs> right now, we are. If you are a believer in the Lord Jesus, if you have repented of your sins and you're saying, God, I'm going to follow you, he says, right there, your faith in Jesus Christ, you are his. I like that part. We, we are his. And, and when, are, when is it going to happen? Right now. It's not like I said, when you crawl and you do enough good works and, and you, stir, you pick up paper in the church. or what, he, he says, I want you to know that you can be his today, right now, when you receive Christ. And what do you do when you talk? Paul said, we, we are. We are his workmanship. He said it. And can you say that I, I am his workmanship? And so many times our words, we, we spout off words, even slo- like, like, like I hear people say, I'm just so sloppy. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm, I'm always late. Even like little words are important. I'll, I'll never do, I can never do that. But God's like, hey, I want you to do that. I can never do what y'all are doing. Wait a minute, God might want you to do what the, y'all are doing. And he's saying, hey, can you, the power of your words, I am his workmanship. We are his workmanship. In Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 22, talking about the power of your confession. Your confession is very powerful. It's so powerful that you are saved from your old life to your new life, just the power of your confession. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that he died and he rose again. And he goes on and he says in verse 20, chapter 4 and verse 22 of Proverbs. I was reading this the other day just to take a little detour. It says, for they are the, they, uh, here it is. For they, talking about the words of life, they are life to those who find them. How many of you have found the words of life? And it says, the words of life are healing. This is Old Testament, OT. Healing to all, to all their flesh, to all their flesh. The words of Christ, he cannot not heal. <laughs> the presence, like Jordan was talking about, the presence of the Lord. Depre- depression can't stay in his presence. And his words are powerful, and your words are powerful. And it goes on, a lot of you know the scripture right here. Keep your heart with all vig- vigilance, for from it flow the spring of light. A lot of you know that, man, I got to guard my heart. Do you know the next scripture after that? Look at the next scripture. Put away from you crooked speech. <laughs> you, ever, you, know, like, you, ever, you ever saw crooked speech? You know, I, I, one, one time I went to the chiropractor. I don't go much. I don't like it. I don't, I don't like all that popping. But, I, I, you know, popping your neck. And one time I walked in the chiropractor and he said, stand still. So I stood there like this. And he said, your shoulders are crooked. I said, my shoulders are crooked. I don't feel crooked. <laughs> he said, yeah, look at it. He said, and, and sure enough, I looked at it and one was, it was like this. Like, I mean, it wasn't that bad. But it was like one was higher than the other. So he did a few poppins on me, and uh, he got me back to uh, wh- where I wasn't crooked. And the other day, I, I saw a, uh, a guy at the, the men's thing, man. He was walking around like, you know, I could tell like he was crooked. And I wanted to go pop him, like pop that shoulder. Why am I saying that? Someone had to tell me, dude, you're crooked. Like, wait a minute, you, you need some correction here. And, and he's saying that here, it's connected to the healing. The crooked speech, it's connected, it said it right after the healing scripture. 
it will be healing to all your flesh. And he says, okay, what I want you to do now, now that you know the words of life and you know about healing and I want to heal your flesh, I want you to correct your speech. And, and to me, this is very important in my speech. And it says, and to put devious or perverse talk from you. And we think about perverse talk as someone who's like, you know, talking dirty or, you know, just corrupt. But he, it's actually, it, perversion is, right? You know that, you heard me say that before. Perversion is a wrong version. You're speaking the wrong version of life and therefore you're bringing sickness upon you or whatever it is. It could be emotional it could be your future. You're destroying even with your words. And he's saying, put away from you crooked, perverse words. And, and your, your words are powerful. They're, they're very, you know this, and you've heard sermons on this, I'm sure. But, he, and he's saying, it put, put, start changing your speech and see what happens. I am his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Believe it. God has chosen me. And that sounds so prideful, but he, he did. He went and chose you. And he says, I want to use you in a mighty way. And, and he, he's saying here to us, he's saying, I want you to change your speech. Do you, I heard it said the word influence, right in the middle of influence is the word flu, F-L-U, flu. And, it, and, and whenever you are around someone who's speaking crooked, it can influence into you it, like a flu. It, it's contagious. That's where you get the word influenza, in flu. And so you, that word, whenever you are around people, you better believe it that something is influencing you. And if you don't know your authority or your power in the Lord, you're going to be sucked up into that influence. And, and God is calling us, calling me and you to be a people of influence with your words. Just with, we, just with your, get your, get, go to a spiritual chiropractor and say, straighten out my words. I need them to be straightened, and it's the Lord that does it. You just start repeating what the Lord says, believing what the Lord says. You know, influence. You've heard about people, they hang around people who drink, but they don't drink. But after time, they just start drinking. Are they, they, they around negative people all the time? And, and I remember I had a friend, he was so negative, and he actually liked to fight. He was negative and he liked to fight. And I don't know why I hung around him. You know, I hung around him and guess what? I, find, I started finding I was negative and I started wanting to fight. I said, I got to get away from this guy. And I did. I, I got far away from this guy. And it says, I get, get put away from you. Put devious talk far from you. Far away from you. If I go to your house, it shouldn't be in your house. Crooked speech. I don't like this, and I don't like my parents, and I don't like the way Louisiana is, the way it is. You know, it's like God is able to change you. And the reason why I'm hounding on this is, is this scripture in verse 10. That you would begin to say, like Apostle Paul, we are. We are his workmanship created in Christ. That word last week, Zach, what's amazing, Zach talked about the workmanship last week, and he said it comes from the word poetry, a masterpiece. You ever seen some poetry written, and it's like a masterpiece? And he says, that's who you are. And at the conference we went to, you guess what the guy talked about? About workmanship and about poetry, about the influence. I was like, okay, God, I think you want to talk to us. But it the workmanship here, it, it denotes someone who has extraordinary ability to write or create literary master, uh, a masterpiece. And God's saying, that's who you are in Christ. In Christ, that's who you are. And, and it's time, I believe, that we as believers begin to speak it, not, not in a prideful way, but God, I know that you are calling me. And God, I know that you have chosen me and my family and that, God, you want us to do great things for you on this earth, created in Christ. That's who God sees you as now. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit mm, within you? That's why it's so important to know where the Holy Spirit is, 
Where's the Holy Spirit? He's on the inside. If you're filled with, with his spirit, and he's saying you are a walking temple of the Holy Spirit. I knew a, a, an evangelist, powerful evangelist that God used him mightily in healing. And he would get dressed in the mornings, button up his shirt, and he would look in that mirror. And he would look in that mirror and he would tell himself, tell this old stinky flesh, you are called by God, you will be used by God, you are filled with the Holy Spirit, and wherever this temple goes, the Holy Spirit goes with it. And he just began to prophesy over himself and what God has for him. And God began to open up doors to where he could begin to pray for people and bring healing, your words, in, in, in your, through your speech. And it goes on, it says, for you were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. <laughs> and it starts, with your, it starts with your speech. Is it crooked? Coming out crooked. Coming out perverse. Uh, you know, the wrong version of what Jesus talked about, but he's done something on the inside of us and he wants to keep doing it. And back to Ephesians, it says, therefore remember that at one time you Gentiles, if you don't know what a Gentile is, it was a non-Jew. And in, in, in other words, anyone that was not a Jew, they were outside the presence of God. There was a wall of separation where the Gentiles could only look in and, 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 and want to be with the Lord. But the Gentiles, they were pagans. It was us. <laughs> Pagan almost rhymes with Cajun. No, I'm joking. Uh, but you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision. And this only talks about covenant. It says they were in covenant with the Lord, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at one time at, at, at that time, separated from Christ. Do you remember when you were separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers to the, there it is, to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without promise, with, I mean, without God in the, and, wait, there it is. Covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. This is, he's, he's reminding you of where you were. I remember I was in that jail cell, like I told you. I, I remember I was sitting there just looking at the, at the drain. <laughs> and I was like, God, I have no hope. I don't even know what to do, Lord. And I got out of jail. Someone paid the bail. And I got out of jail, and I went straight to our pastor and my dad. And, and I just began to cry out to the Lord. And sometimes that's what Apostle Paul says. Don't forget what I brought you from. And don't forget where I want to bring you to. And you may be saying, I hear some people say, well, I'm not a bad person. I'm not, you know, I'm all right. I'm good morally. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of God's, God's glory. In other words, good works is not going to get you there. There's a certain religion that believes that. They believe that good works, it's going to get you there. If I'm good enough, if I'm, if I'm polite enough, I, if I help the poor, and the Bible says that's good, but you still got to believe upon the Son, which we're going to see here. It says in verse 12, it says you were separated, you were strangers, you had no hope without God. And I, you got to get to that place in your life to where you see that you are lost. I got to a place in my life where I was like, I am so lost, God. I need a Savior. I cannot save my, I can't work enough to save myself. I can't read enough to save myself, but it's only through the power of God. And it's whenever I fell to my knees and I, I began to cry out to God. And he reminds us again how we were and how we are. How we are, you, how you see yourself as a believer. And if you've never received Jesus as your Savior, or if you live in a double lifestyle, this is your situation. He says you're hopeless, you're cut off. You have a wall of separation. There's no peace. People look for peace, but they look in the wrong place. I know somebody right now, they try in Buddha. They try in New Age. They try in tarot cards. They try in all, I know them. They try in all these things. And I'm like, well, just keep knocking them down because there's no hope in either one of all of them. 
Keep going because someday you're going to end up and you're going to say, it's Jesus. He's the answer. But he's saying, listen, this is how you should have, this is how you were. I know that some people, they say they get saved, but there's no life change. There's no life change. Nothing in their speech changes. Nothing in their action. Not, not, not even how they treat their wives. Nothing changes. They, they can put on a show. I knew a guy in our church, not this one, uh, in our church who, uh, man, he was the nicest guy in church. Man, he had, ladies would come in and he would help them with their coats and he was doing this and, and moving the chairs. And I was like, man, that's a good dude. And then I dug further into his marriage, and he was a creep at home. I'm telling you, he was just mean to his wife. And I said, this ain't, how can bitter and sweet come out of one stream? And, and I began to get into his life, and I was like, brother, I said, are you, are you born again? <laughs> Have you been saved? Well, yeah. I said, I don't, I don't know, man. It, it's, it, you, you need to let that thing get on the inside of you. You're going to humble yourself even at home, because you are in a hopeless situation. He said, well, I'm trying to do good. I said, that, that's where you're missing it. it it's, it's whenever you say, God, it's not my will, God, but your will, and I will submit to your word. And in verse 13, that word again, but now, but God, how you were. I remember I was a wretched liar, thief in the jail cell. And then Christ came to me and opened my eyes and I submitted to his word and he came in and, and he healed my heart. And he goes on in verse 12, it says, but now in Christ Jesus, in Christ, in, are you in, this is a position, knowing where you're at. I am in Christ. It says, you have, were once far off and have been brought near by the blood of of Jesus. Oh, that's good. That's rejoicing right there. Thank God. There's the hope. He brought in the hope. Paul brings you to a hopeless situation. You were cut off. You, you were, God was like this to you. And but now, he says, but now, but now, right now, at this time, at 1151, he's saying, but right now, Christ wants to come in you. In Christ, if you, you were once afar, and that's the second thing. The first thing is we are his workmanship, and the second thing is we are near. We ain't going to be near. We are near. It says that it says we have been brought near by the blood of, of Jesus Christ. Faith in the blood of Jesus is the only way to get near. That young man that I know that's chasing all those religions, the only way that he's going to get into the kingdom of God or to get near to the Lord is whenever he cries out and says, God, it's your blood. It's, oh, Peter calls it the precious blood of Jesus. We have that song, what can wash away my sin? Nothing. Oh, precious is the flow. That what? Do you believe it? Do you believe that, that your sins are washed away? If your faith does not include the blood of Jesus, then, then you're still far off. But the confession that you have is that we are near now. Oh, that, that, this is such a powerful thing because this is where the devil loses. The devil lost somewhere. The devil's counting his votes and he said, man, I lost. You know, the devil's the biggest loser there ever was. He's the longest loser there's ever, there's ever, there's ever been. It's the devil. This is where he lost with this scripture, through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's where Jesus said, I'm going to die. I'm going to give my blood, and it's going to open up the door for salvation for all men. And uh, the, if your faith, like I said, if it doesn't, include the blood of Jesus and you remembering that blood, what he did on Calvary, on the cross for us, then your faith, I, I, I would have to question, like, 
Are you, are you living for Jesus? And, and the blood is what really brings us near. We are a church by the blood of Jesus Christ. You, you can't pay money to be part of this church. You can't pray 10 times and, okay, now you're part of the church. You, you can't even do enough good works to be part of the church. You, you can't even be born into this church. The only way to enter into the church of the living God is through the blood of, blood of Jesus. And he says, outside the, this covenant, the, the Gentiles were without hope. They were without a future. They were, not, they were far away from God. But he said, when Jesus died upon the cross, he brought them, they were far and it brought them near. I like that. It, it's a replica almost of the, 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 uh, the tabernacle. They had the outer courts, right? People stood on the outer courts. They couldn't go in because it wasn't allowed. They had a curtain that would divide them. And whenever Jesus died, it says that the curtain, the veil was ripped from the top to the bottom and it opened up to where, like Jordan says, we have the presence of God. We can go in and on, on the mercy seat, there's the blood that brings us the sacrifice that brought them in. And there is the presence of God and everything that you could possibly need, the peace that you need, it's in there. And it brings you near. This is the blessing of God. From the, I think about the prodigal son, the story of the prodigal son. He left his dad. He left the presence of the father. He was afar off. <laughs> and he started thinking, I, I may be able to go back. And whenever he walked... He was brought near to the father. And the father said, go get the fatted calf. Come on, we need some blood in here. And he says, my son has returned. He was dead and now he's alive. You see, that's how God, God doesn't want you to be far off. Hopeless. He doesn't want that. Like the song we just sang, he's for us, not against us. He, he wants the best for you. In verse 14, it says, for he himself is our peace. Oh, you could stop right there. People try to buy peace. They'll go on vacation to the Bahamas. They'll go on this vacation or whatever. Go here, go there, and it's great for a moment, but they're trying to fill a void, and you have it. It's, it's Jesus, and he was made for, he made us both one. Who both? Like, what both? He made the Jew and the Gentile as one on the cross of Christ. And it says he's broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. Oh, the goodness of God, the peace. And that's the third thing. We are one. We're his workmanship. We are near and we are one with Christ now. He's, through the blood of Jesus Christ, he says, uh, he, this is a confession that you can make a confession that you can say, Father, God, I thank you that I'm, when you're praying, when you're driving, Sean, when you're driving and you just begin to pray, thank you, Father, that we're one. That's what the Bible looks at a married couple. He says the two shall become one. You're not far off anymore. I brought you near. Not only that, but you become one with me. Wow. Wow. You could stay there for a long time on this topic of being one with Christ. How many times we get divided in our mind and in your speech. Your speech gets crooked because of how you feel or, or your circumstances. But you keep focused and you begin to say, Father, I thank you that I received you from the cross. I believe that you died for my sins and I believe that we are, are one, God, now. In verse 15, it says, by abolishing the law of the commandments expressed in ordinances. Jesus fulfilled it all, that he might create in himself one new man in place of two, making peace. It's done. It's finished. There's no more searching because Jesus has done it. And, and the, the key here is that we are reconciled with Christ. He, he reconciled, the cross of Christ was a reconciliation. And he says, I want you to participate in this reconciliation. I, I, I want to reconcile, 
I want to equal out your, I want to erase your sins from you. I died on the cross. I took your sins. And now I want to reconcile that with you. I know some of you, you walk around in shame or guilt. And God's saying this. He says, I want to wipe that out of you. And I want your confession to not be crooked, but to be with a version that I have spoken. And it says that I have called you. In verse 18, it says this. I mean, where am I at? 16, thank you. Might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. I'm passing up a lot of good stuff. And he came and he preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. Verse 18, and through him, I want to end with this one, we both have access in one spirit. We both have access in one spirit to the Father. This is powerful. That's the fifth thing, is that we are welcomed now. You have access now. You are welcomed by the Father but because of the blood of Jesus Christ. You are welcomed. It says that here. That word access right here, that word access, it means it's instant connection. It's instant connection. It is a word that is used to describe individuals who had free entrance, unhindered approach to the king's court. That's what that word means. Now, he says, you are able to walk into the presence of the Lord. It's an open door now. And he says, anybody, anywhere can come in and talk with me. You don't have to change. Wait, how do I look? You don't have to get in the mirror. You don't need a gift. He said, I want you to come on in there with me and let's talk. It says, we are are welcome now. There are no more appointments going through a middle man. Jesus destroyed all that on the cross of Christ. It's an unhindered approach at any time. And it means that when when you are in Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit provides a way for you. How many of you, whenever you get on your computer, you know you got your login somewhere, password, aggravating thing? And so you type in your login and then you type in your password, and then there's that other one, it's like, it says, remember me. You remember that? So whenever you go back to that website, you you don't have to do all that jazz. You know, it's like your your password's in there, and I want to tell you, whenever you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, when you know what he did upon the cross of Christ, that's how it is. You have immediate access. You don't need a login or, or some kind of fancy word to... He says, I have accepted you, and he says, you are are welcome. Actually, I have one more scripture, and this is the end. So when you you are no longer strangers, you're no longer aliens, but now you are fellow citizens. That's powerful right there. You are fellow citizens with the saints. And members, that's who you are, the Bible says, if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus. What an affirmation here. Start saying this. I am a citizen of heaven now. We are kinfolk, as we say, if you want to put it in Cajun word. We're kinfolk now. That's what the Lord's saying. And as members and as citizens now, we, we talk differently. Have you ever seen someone from another country? of course, and they, they just have a different accent. They dress different than we do. They act different. You know, you hang around with people from other countries, and, and, and this is it. We, we don't act like the world anymore. We're, we're citizens of heaven. We, talk, we don't talk crooked anymore. We don't talk with a different version of I can't, and I don't know if God's called me and, but now you lift your head up and you say, wait a minute, the Bible says that now when you are a fellow citizen. That's what the Bible says if you believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. 
no more we can't or we ain't I remember when I lived in Russia I lived there for some time and and I remember I couldn't I couldn't vote they wouldn't let me I couldn't work I couldn't buy I couldn't even buy train tickets at one time because I wasn't a citizen but I got this form one time I filled out because I was there for a long time and it uh, allowed me to start buying some things and going some places. And, but whenever you become a full-fledged citizen, all rights are yours. And the Lord is saying that. Now that you're in the kingdom of God, take advantage of the rights that you have as a citizen. Not in a prideful way, but saying, Lord, I thank you that you're going to use me. And your speech begins to change because now you're not a citizen of where you used to live, but now you're a citizen of heaven. And I want to make this point right here is that there are no more Jews. There are no more Greeks. The Bible says under, it says we are one in the kingdom of God through the blood of Jesus. For, for someone to say this, hey, I, I am more blessed or I'm more special, <laughs> it's wrong. Because the Bible says, as a believer in Jesus, we're all welcome into the kingdom. And some people say, hey, would you pray for this for me? And I say, you can go straight and pray yourself. There's an open door. It's, it's a welcoming door. The Father is waiting for you, waiting for you to come in. Now we're ambassadors of the King. Now. The Bible says that you have become citizens, members of the household. You're an ambassador of the Lord now. Now you walk around presenting the kingdom of God. If you really believe this stuff, if you believe in the blood of Jesus, many of you profess it. You confess, I believe in the blood. And God's saying, okay, I want you to begin to present, present me. I want you to to present my life. I want you to, to show the kingdom of God. One time I, w- I went to a restaurant. It was a long time ago. but And I remember it was a steakhouse, Western Sizzling. You remember that? Out in Gonzales. And I went there and I, and I um, ordered a steak. It was after church one night, man. And they plopped that steak down in front of me and it had a dead roach on it and I was like oh my goodness so I called the waiter over I said like I like steak but I don't like roaches on top of it and man they were just they were ashamed they were like oh no so they gave me a free steak that day and they gave me another one I can come back with no roaches on it Uh, but my point is this Outside was an advertisement. The best steaks in town. And we as, as advertisers of the Lord, come on. We, we, we got to be serving, speaking what the Lord says around us. Amen. Encouraging one another. We are one now, the Bible says. We are welcome in the Lord. If you see someone rejected, you begin to tell them, hey, there's an open door for you. God wants to use you. No longer strangers anymore. That's powerful. That's shouting words right now. No longer strangers anymore. In other words, sometimes I'll talk to Asa and Evelyn, and they'll tell me, they'll say, hey, George, you can come to my house anytime. Well, not anytime, but during the day. He said, you don't even have to call. Just come in if you want some coffee. And, and you know what? We're no longer strangers anymore. They welcome me and the house is pretty much open. I just knock on the door and give me some coffee. I don't have to go to Starbucks. I go to their house. Uh, I'm joking, but, but it, it shows me we're not strangers. And it's the same thing with the Lord. So I just want you to stand this morning and, and examine your heart and your speech. Going from... I ain't to I am. And you say, what about my past? I've been violated. What about my past? I've been put down or I've been a failure. And God says this, he says, 
You are my workmanship. You're precious in my sight. It's not about your failures or your, your hang-ups. God's saying, repent, turn, change your mind, come into the kingdom, believe upon the blood of Jesus. And I want to invite the prayer team up here. If you need prayer, we want to pray with you that God's presence will fill you and that you would know who you are in Christ. Your identity changes. God, I thank you, God, for what you're doing in, in your people, God. God, I pray that for an infilling of your spirit, God, as we hunger for you, God, that we would know you in a different way. You know, know you as Savior. Know you as the Father, that we would become one with you. God, I thank you for your church, the powerful church that it is, God. I pray over ones who are hurting, who are feel far away from the Lord, God. As we pray, God, that you would draw them near, that you would draw them near to the cross. And I thank you, Father, for all the forgiveness and all that you've done in our lives. And we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.